All right, welcome. Uh, my name's Plainsheart or Ryuji Takasu. Uh, tough name to say, actually. Uh, today I'm gonna show you a very simple way of animating something that looks really interesting. So we want to start off with a mo text. I'm just gonna edit this. Come on. Yeah, Cinema 3D doesn't always want to work with me. I'm just gonna type in Ryuji. I'm just gonna look for a font to use. Preferably with Gurning. I uh, could use Impact, but overused, let's be honest here. Uh, so, yeah, I did not prepare this at all. And I'm probably gonna open the original scene I did and keep switching back and forth. <laughs> Probably. And uh, yeah, let's just go with a gooey black. Uh, regular in the middle. And let's see. Ryuji. Uh, definitely like all caps more. There we go. So now we. Let's focus it from the front. Now we got this very basic plain text. No fun at all. So what can we do that makes this a bit more interesting to look at as a animation? Well, first off, you would start looking at the MoGraph effectors to see what's there. And we have the uh, random, the defector or defector. Pretty sure that's one, but no, it actually isn't. Or the uh, delay, we can use the step. It's also very fun to use. But what I want to look at, and this does require the plugin, but I mainly use this plugin to break the object. And it's Nitro Blast 2D, it's called. And basically, let's set this to high, uh, separate mode text. And we don't want it to be dynamic. This is important. Uh, we are not going to mess with the dynamics on it. Uh, you can if you want to. Uh, so let me actually do this, make it a bit more fat. Uh, what you also can do is add a fillet cap, but I will be showing a way how we can uh, get the fillet caps coming later on this video. Which is also why I keep separate mo text on. Uh, so we got 100 pieces. Now it's gonna calculate 100 pieces for the R, Y, U, U, T, J, and I, if I'm not mistaken. So this will take a while. And as you can see, you already see the whole thing changing. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, we have several. Uh, several Nitro Blast objects, as they're called. Uh, we can remove these, because we don't want that. And that's where it applies the dynamics. It basically uses uh, the apply to children thing. Now what I want to do is, we want to convert it. I will already, I'm going to convert it to a fracture, and all of them obviously. So now we have uh, all these as uh, in the last one actually. Uh, as you can see there's 95 pieces here, 92, 96, 96, 96, 97. So it will try to make uh, 100 pieces as accurate as possible. If I play nothing will happen. If I hit render, well uh, Night for Blast actually adds a Adds a texture on the outside and inside. Uh, to remove that, you have to either delete these all or just remove uh, them here. Uh, but I am gonna undo a few things, and you will hear me meshing Control Z quite a bit. There we go. We're back to the start. I'm gonna go back to Nitro Blast, Nitro Blast main. 
I'm going to go to Mosex and create single object. Now, the reason I do this is, uh, let me actually reset that. Uh, it's mainly because now it will make, or it should make one object, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, how did I do that last time? Huh. And this is the point where I will go to my recent files, go to animation 2, because that's the one I used, yes. And ignore the name, it's uh, from a forum. Um, I, I can't remember. That's annoying. Uh, Yes, I remember. Then we edit this, this. Sorry. Okay, let me back back that up quite a bit. So we have the mode text here. Uh, basically, what you do, you make it edible by clicking this button or pressing C on the keyboard. Now this will create uh, a few separate objects that you also want to make edible, to, edit, editable. Then you select them all just by click dragging or shift clicking. And then you want to go to connect objects plus delete. Now, now we get the single object I was talking about. My apologies for that. And we go to the nitroplast main fracture. And now it will create 100 pieces all over. And it actually did 100 which is quite surprising. A lot of the times it won't actually make a hundred. Now I am still going to convert it to a fracture object because here is where we can apply effectors. And here, this is where it gets fun because the push apart. Well, let's, let's see this. So basically we get this animation. So you're probably already, uh, or let me just play this back. So basically it comes in and there's a small bounce and you see it switch to something else. Uh, as you can see here, there is a there are display tags. And basically this gets displayed in this area. And as soon as it hits frame 95, it switches over to this mode text. And then it has a animated uh, fillet cap that comes in. So it it looks weird, but it's actually very smooth. But yeah, let's go back. Uh, let me zoom back in. Let me see if I can align it back up. No, I cannot. Anyways, so we've got the push up part effect now. And basically we want to invert this. So basically when it's 100%, we want it to be whole. If it's zero, no, wait, sorry. Doesn't work with this one. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't, uh, I didn't prepare the tutorial this time around. Usually I go over quickly, okay, this is what I did, this is how I did that. But yeah, so basically we have the strength starting at a hundred. Let me just do that. And let's say we go to frame 60. We have a drop down to a zero. And add a keyframe there. And I'm going to increase this to 180. And basically you get this very slow pulling together to form the word. Now, this is not where it ends. Again, select your uh, fracture object. And if you don't have a nitro blast, you can go to MoGraph, either use fracture or Voronoi fracture. Both of these work the same way. It will break the object apart. Uh, but it won't uh, automatically add physics. 
and it, and you will see the different pieces all over like if i were to go to garage shading lines you can see there's all sorts of lines around here and let me just turn that back off i'm gonna delete these because i do want to add a different texture eventually and i'm gonna delete all of those there we go yeah okay i was quite sure if i uh, had deleted anything else now we go to again uh, to continue where we left off select the fracture go to effector and so let's say random now as you can see it already starts doing different things um, and basically you want to have this so we have it here now uh, and what I did in the last one I didn't have them in go in the height or left or right but I did do them in depth by doing this no not cylinder sphere this actually uh, requires a lot of tweaking or did I do that with the push effect effect uh, like I said I didn't prepare and uh, as you can see uh, it it moves rather slowly that's because our parameter is like crap but if we start increasing this amount you can already see okay it's starting to affect it more and more now let me just scale this up big time there we go I go uh, with play with the fall off and now this will create the interesting effect of um, how do you call it having the pieces come from the back and from the front even though we're not messing with um, it going in the positive as you can see it will always do that now I am gonna place this more here and let me just see uh no also you can invert it not a fan of that and i'm gonna have to do this so basically uh, this is what i also did i added uh, i did it well like the visibility is counting on the strength if we go here and we increase it you can see there's not quite a lot of pieces together but as you can see it will start bringing in all the pieces together to make this one beautiful item so let me just check okay so that animation ends at frame 60. so we want uh let's say and of course you can uh, go above 100 i felt like uh, 100 is enough let me just do that like we said frame 60 is where uh the first animation ends and so let's go one second behind it have it drop down to zero so now it still will be assembling as you can see very slowly but you get the idea and of course slowly everything turns visible again blah -de blah -de blah but that's not all we can do uh, i mentioned the delay effector for a very short bit which is also what we are gonna do i'm gonna say spring and uh, let's just see if it's already happening yeah it, very little so let me increase that I started going different in my head. Is that the delay effects are messing things up? Probably. Uh, no, I know it wants affected, so we need position. 
Uh, yeah, this is why I... Oh, come on. Yeah, the... Come on, drain. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. It was the strength after all. So let's increase that a little bit more. So, and these were all the settings I played with, basically, with the delay, random, and push apart. And if we go back to this one, uh, I, there is a camera shake animation. I'll get to that rather quick uh, in a bit. But first, let's do the second part. And that's where, um, where the stuff comes in. Let me just... There we go. Yeah, I'll, I like that more. Maybe add a rotation? Don't think that will be beneficial because, another thing, we don't have rotation set here. And we can uh, enable that as well. So now pieces will be, some pieces will be rotating and we get a more heavy shake. And as you can see, you get uh, the cracks and everything. But let's say we wouldn't want that. So let's create another mod text, make it 50, UG. And basically we're going to make it the exact same, uh, sorry, middle regular and as you can see you can see nothing you can't see anything i mean now if i were to remove this okay th this one takes uh longer to get to a resting position or basically a t-post their default position so now i've changed the strength of the delay so now it's around 130 that it stops. So let's start the magic. So first of all, the dynamic stack uh, on the dynamic, sorry, not the dynamic stack, but on the dynamics object uh, at a display. And we can use the visibility. Now this actually works if you're adding transparency which gives a very interesting look inside, I must say. But that's not what we want. On frame 30, uh, 130, we want this to go to a zero. So on this frame, we want it to be 100. And I'm... Let me animation that, clear. So basically, we have our animation, it comes in, it settles, and it should disappear. Why is it not? Right, because I also added this. There we go. So basically, now it's there, and bam, it's gone. And then we need the inverse of this. So make sure you, uh, when copying, by control dragging, by the way, uh, make sure you delete the keyframes. Not delete the object, delete the keyframes. There we go. And so on 130, instead of it being uh, zero, which is gonna be for now, or on this side, Wait, what? Did I? Okay, I'm... Right. I should enable it. Uh, the... So, as you can see there, uh, we s quickly switch between the objects without anyone noticing. And now we can add in uh, a bit of detail, actually, that I actually quite liked on mine. So, we're... Let's do this, this, and this. So basically we have the fillet cap set, but we actually don't have it set. So 
let's uh, record the radius and steps of uh, both the uh, front and back. That's basically what start and end means. Let's drag this out to... Uh, this one is going to be so much longer than the original. But then again, I was using 24 frames per second, not uh, 30. And then, now we just uh, increase, like I increase the steps to four. And uh, let's do two here. Uh, one thing I also put on was constraint. That way it actually won't get bigger. So as you can see here, and uh, let me record those steps because that would be awkward. And uh, once we look back in the animation, it slowly comes together, jiggles a bit, and suddenly smooths out without anyone actually really noticing. And that's basically how I did the beef of the whole animation. That's what this comes down to. And I fastened it up a little bit more. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Right. Now for the camera, uh, you should have this if you have R18 Studio. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I used a motion camera. Uh, hang on. Uh, whoops. Motion camera. Make sure nothing is selected, by the way. It will make uh, it a child of it for some reason. Once we go look at it, uh, we have to set it up still, by the way. So, have the cameraman be around here. Rotate him around. Uh, and basically, it's just playing with the camera angle you want for him. So, I want him to be a bit lower. Now, when I play this, you see this very slight camera shake, which adds to detail, like someone is filming or something. And that was my phone. What a fuck message to me. Oh, work. That's even worse. But yeah. So, and also uh, keep this in mind when working with the motion camera. Uh, uh, you can't use the settings in here, you have to use the tag for it. And it will all be there as well. Uh, it's just named different. And something else I did was uh, play with the focal length and focal size to have a very sneaky animation, actually, uh, that I mixed in there. Let me just go to the side view. I'm pretty sure you can see it. Huh? And just uh, pay attention to the blue uh, square. As you can see, it gets smaller and smaller and focuses more, more and more. And let's just see what that does. Uh, it adds a very slight zoom effect you actually wouldn't see otherwise. And this scene is a complete mess, by the way, if you look at all the lines in the 3D space. But yeah, now basically what you're left with is the rendering. So uh, let me just show you how I uh, set it up. Uh, basically, I used 9020, uh, 1080p HDTV will automatically set it. Set this to AVI. And I actually set the uh, alpha channel on. I uh, didn't render it with a background. Because why would I? I set this to best two times, two by two and four by four. And let me actually make sure that I'm giving you the yeah and gas animation. And that's basically all the settings I changed to get a rather good-looking animation out of it. Now this for me would not take uh, that long. There are uh, no textures to be calculated. Uh, that's a first uh, thing. And no reflections. Because if I go here, and I oh, go to the camera, and let's just pick this frame. 
Uh, this might take a bit longer than normal because I'm also recording. Uh, as you can see, we have these highlights all around. Uh, on the sides, we have uh, very detailed reflections that actually shouldn't be there. But as you can see, uh, there's quite a ton of reflections going on. But yeah, this would render in within 10 minutes, I would say. But anyways, that's how I made that tutorial. How, that's how you can do it on your own. Uh, like I said, if you don't have the Nitro Blast uh, 2.0, plugin you can use the Voronoi fracture or the normal fracture uh, keep in mind it won't have this type of thickness to it I believe you can add it by throwing in a cloth surface uh, but it won't have the same effect it won't look as good as uh, this basically when it all settles Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you guys in the next one.